This meeting of the Starful Board of Aldermen will now come to order. Please rise for the saying of the Pledge of Allegiance, after which Alderman Vaughn would like to open us in a word of prayer, and we will observe a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a great God, almighty, all-wise, all-knowing, all-powerful, all seeing, all hearing, all understanding God. Again, Father God, here's the man on the board coming for you, asking for guidance and direction, which way to take this city. Father, you said your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not ours. They are far from the east to the west. Father, we ask you that you will give us ways of Jesus and thoughts of Jesus, that all our decisions that we make will glorify you and lead the city in a direction the way it should go. Father God, we pray now that you will please forgive us of all our sins. Blessing us. Lord, we pray that you will bless the economic development team. Father God, with the task that we have put before them, Father God, they will find jobs for this city. We ask you to bless every leader in this city. But Father God, most of all, we ask you that you will bless each one of us. God will of our yea be yea, of our nay be nay. Let us stand on the principle of God that every decision that we make will glorify you. Father God, in that end time, that we all will stand, and you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. We ask you, Father, be with us in this and being it tonight. We give you praise, we give you glory, because you said in your words, you will never leave us, nor would you forsake us. You said, whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, and just believe. God, I'm leaning and depending on you, trusting you, that you will direct this man and this boy and the way and the direction that we should go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you have before you a copy of the modified written agenda. And before I open the floor for potential changes, uh, I have one that I'd like to make, and that is to remove item 9B uh, from the agenda. That's under Mayor's Business, the consideration of approving propo proposed sidewalk improvements and financing on Lafayette Street to be financed for a period of five years in an amount not to exceed $30,000. Without objection, I'll remove that from the agenda. Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been removed from the agenda. And I saw an email from the city attorney wishing to pull one set of minutes. Was that August the 26th? Correct, the last set of minutes. Without objection, uh, on the recommendation of the city attorney, uh, I would uh, propose revising the agenda uh, to remove the August 26th meeting. Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, those minutes have been removed uh, from the agenda. Are there any proposed revisions to the agenda from the members of the board? <coughs> Alderman Ball. <coughs> On a board business, Mr. Mayor, get to, uh, item number D. Get it to be explained to us what changes are going to be made there, and then I will leave it on the consent on the medical benefit. Get some well, change. Mr. Boyd, would you like to? Mr. Mayor, I'm going to pull it off anyway. All right. Well, so we'll just discuss it uh, in uh, under board business. Uh, item 11D has been removed from the consent agenda. Alderman Vaughn, do you have further proposed revision to the agenda? Yes, sir. Under planning, uh, D, move it to consent. Uh, proposed revision from Alderman Vaughn is to move item 11 11 B 2 D move item 11 B 2 D to the consent agenda that is a request for approval of a request from the Mississippi Alzheimer's Association to place five banners in the city to bring awareness of the October 12, 2014 walk to end Alzheimer's. 
proposed revision by Alderman Vaughn is to place that on the consent agenda. Is there any objection? Mayor, I don't have an objection. Well, let me just mention this to the board as a matter of policy. I think we have consistently started allowing um, banners to be placed across the street. One uh, unique and noticeable thing about this one is, of course, whatever's the will of the board, just want to point it out. They're asking for five banners. So, you know, this will set a precedent. So whatever's the will of the board, I have no objection to it. And each banner costs $225. So we may start getting similar requests for multiply banners. So I just want to point that out. You know, I'm not against this, but I just want to point that out to the board. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? No objection, but I do have a question. Yep. Uh, does it state in here when the banners will be taken down? It does not. No. Uh, we would take them down a reasonable time after the walk, but if the board wishes to specify, you certainly may. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Vaughn, do you have further proposed revisions? No, sir. That's it. Are there any further proposed revisions from the members of the board? Alderman Perkins. Mayor, let me go on my old agenda because I, you know, I don't have time to review an amended agenda on the day of the board meeting. And let me just make a couple of comments, Mayor, uh, since I'm getting to this, um, and I waive my time at the uh, portion on the agenda. Um, you know, if this, if it's going to be the policy of this board to continue to have amended agendas, uh, then we need to eliminate the requirement for the department heads to be held to a deadline. Uh, on 5 o'clock on Thursdays and, and then additionally it's not fair to the members of the board in particular myself and others uh, when we have a, a packet we pick over the weekend and then when we get here to the table uh, which seems to be the normal practice now that we have a table full of matters there and so I, I think we need to do a uh, better job as a governing body as a whole to ensure that we just um, control this agenda unless there's something just really uh, urgent and necessity, so, uh, but it's becoming a practice now. So with that being said, Mayor, let me just look at my agenda. I'm, I want all three set the minutes off. If they're already off, then that's fine. All three set the minutes off that agenda. They um, are listed as all. Okay. Um, let's go over uh, the uh, cafeteria plan. That needs to get taken off the agenda. The insurance needs to come off. Taken off the agenda or consent taken agenda. off the agenda? I'm sorry, consent agenda. All right. Uh, all right. We've got, we've got the cafeteria plan all. What uh, was your next matter? Uh, the insurance plan. Uh, this would be um, the medical and dental plan under D. All right, items 11C and items 11 uh, and item 11D uh, will both be off the consent agenda. Alden Perkins, further uh, proposed revision. Yeah, on just for information on purpose, Mayor, we can keep take off the consent agenda. And these things I'm not necessarily against, but I just need to get some information on on items B and C. I need some to see where we're headed with that. In light of the fact we're trying to sell the city hall. Um, we need to take B and C off the planning um, un under uh, Roman numeral of 11B2. Uh, B so it's 11B2. And C. B and C. Yeah, right. that would be request for approval of uh, City Hall certified local government grant program contract with Dr. Michael Fazio for professional assessment. I thought that was pulled from we the agenda. Well, I don't have the amended agenda. I, I would sure. recommend that item be pulled uh, from the agenda. Oh, that's great. Both Which, of those items. Great, Mayor. Great, still great still Mayor. Great. Still Thank you so much. Still on, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like without objection. Uh, B, uh, the items 11, B2, <laughs> B and C. That's a request for approval of City Hall Certified Local Government Grant Program contract with Dr. Michael Fazio and request for approval of City Hall Certified Local Government Grant Program contract with Thomas Shelton Jones Associate. Both be pulled from the agenda. Uh, any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? Those matters <coughs> have been pulled from the agenda. Mayor, uh, the next item on the elected department on one, uh, Mr. Attorney, uh, you, you, you just public uh, and for the press and the, the board, have you reviewed that contract? And if so, has, does that contract meet your approval? It does. In fact, we negotiated the terms of that contract, so it does meet my approval. Okay. Uh, Mayor, uh, let's go on over to um, public services. 
Uh, I see an expenditure for three hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars. Just when we get to it, just a little explanation of what that's about. That's you know a good bit of money uh, on the public service number one. All right. So you'd like that matter off? off that's eleven K one off the consent of agenda. That's the request for approval to issue a notice to proceed to Stidham Construction, the submitter of the lowest and best bid to replace approximately. 5,700 linear feet of gravity sewer in the industrial park. That item's been removed from the consent agenda. And the following item about the seal bids for the water meters, I need that off consent as well. Yeah, that one's off. Okay. And Mayor, one last thing. I see um, the uh, superintendent here from the Starkville School District and uh, the president, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Reverend uh, Lee Brand and Ms. Turner and uh, some other officials. If we can move them up, Mayor, after um, after um, citizens' comments, let's go ahead and uh, matter the quorum and take right. care of them after citizen comments. Proposed revision would be to reorder the agenda, uh, moving what is currently item 10A, uh, consideration of adoption of setting the school district tax levy and uh, move that item, uh, make it a new Roman numeral seven, and reorder uh, the Roman numeral no, Roman numerals that follow that one to accommodate the change. Alderman Perkins, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. I yield the floor. Thank is there you. any objection? Any objection to that proposed revision? Any objection? Any objection? All right. Seeing none. Are there any? Proposed revisions remaining from the members of the board. Alderman Little. Under Mayor's Business um, 9C, add that to consent for one checks. Proposed revision Second. is to add item 9C, the discussion and consideration of the mayor and Alderwoman Wynn to attend the 2014 National League of Cities Annual Congress of Cities Conference in Austin, Texas, with advanced travel not to exceed $2,750 to the consent agenda. Alderman Little, is that your proposed revision? It is. Do I hear any objection? Mr. Mayor, I respectfully object to on consent. All right. That item will remain off the consent agenda. Alderman Little, do you have further proposed revision? I do not. Any further proposed revisions from the members of the board? Alderman Mater. Yes, sir. Under item 10B, I'd like to, to add to that, sir, the motion you know, to, at the bottom of that, to, to advertise public hearings for the millage and budget at the September, uh, to be discussed at the September 16th recess meeting. So it would be advertised public hearings on the proposed millage and budget for the September 16, 2014 meeting. Alderman Manders, that's your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Uh, any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. Can you tell me if item C under that was pulled off consent? Yes, item C and D were both pulled off the consent Thank agenda. Thank you, sir. I yield the floor. Further proposed revisions? Mr. Mayor. Yes. One other item under board business, the last item, item F, discussion and consideration of changes to the public, to the utilities ordinance as recommended by Public Service Director Doug Devlin. Uh, Mr. Devlin and I were working on language as late as today on that, and so it would be premature for a vote tonight. <coughs> the public hearing can go forward, uh, and we'll carry the clean draft forward to the board meeting uh, on the 16th. And hey, Mr. Devlin, are you comfortable with that? Yeah. All right. Just put it off. So, uh, proposed revision has been to pull item 10F, uh, discussion and consideration of changes to the utility ordinance as recommended by Public Services Director Doug Devlin from the, <coughs> uh, from the agenda. Alderman Vaughn, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That matter has been pulled from the agenda. Further proposed revision from members of the board. Any further proposed revisions? Any further <coughs> proposed revisions? Seeing none, a motion to approve the agenda as revised is in order. So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion has been made by Alderman Vaughn to approve the agenda as revised. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Little. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. You now have before you the consent agenda. Is there any objection to the approval of the consent agenda? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, the consent agenda as revised has been approved. You now have before you the April 22nd, 2014 minutes of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen. Discussion. So moved. 
Motion has been made by Alderman Walker to approve the April 22nd, 2014 minutes of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen as presented and reviewed by the City Attorney. Uh, Alderman Walker, is that your motion? Yes. Do I hear a second? Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Walker, do you wish to speak on the mayor? No. Any discussion? Alderman Perkins. Mayor, I um, just want to um, say this to the board, and I routinely um, I vote and support the uh, the minutes. Just want to mention, I mentioned it to the city attorney my way in, and and he understands how the uh, the importance of this from a legal perspective. And the statute provides that the minutes uh, must be approved at the next regular meeting or within 30 days of that meeting, whichever occurs first. So these minutes are very delinquent, uh, very important minutes. All minutes we speak through our minutes. These April 2014 minutes, July minutes. I mean, there's no excuse for these minutes. And the latter minutes, August the 26th, that's because it was a special call meeting and there was not much business conducted. So I'm going to vote against each set. I'm not going to get the floor each time because I haven't had an opportunity to read this. And, and of course, and don't understand, I'm not against these things, but, you know, but, you know, but we just have to be given plenty of time to discuss, to read these matters before we can look at them because all these matters are important. So, but we, this, the administration, uh, Mr. Adams, we need to do a, a better job in ensuring that these minutes are here to us on a timely manner. Uh, and so it'd be in requirement with the law. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'm done. Further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Saying none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. The two opposed by vote of five in favor with two against. This measure passes. The next matter on your agenda is the July 15 minutes. Discussion. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Walker to approve of the July 15, 2014 minutes of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville as presented and reviewed by the City Attorney. Alderman Walker, is that your motion? Yes. Do we hear a second? Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Walker, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. By a vote of five in favor with two against, this measure passes. Uh, that will take us to announcements and comments by the mayor and members of the board. And I have uh, two new employees that I'd like to introduce tonight. Uh, both of these employees are in the Sanitation and Environmental Services Department. I would first like to introduce Alex Bush. Alex joined the department as a laborer in the Sanitation Division. He is originally from Octobah Hall County and graduated from B.L. Moore High School. He is the son of <coughs> Benny Bush and Ali Cannon. Alex and his wife, Shanice, have two sons, Quaterius and Brandon, and a daughter, Kristen. Prior to coming to the city of Starkville to work, Alex was a foreman with Devaney Construction and also worked for SNS Line Clearance, M&M Line Clearance, and Starkville Recycling. Alex enjoys singing and fishing. He and his family attend St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church. Please join me in welcoming Alex. It is now my pleasure to introduce Antonio Hill. He is uh, a new operator in the Landscaping Division of Sanitation and Environmental Services. Antonio is originally from Starkville and is a graduate of Moore High School. Before joining the city of Starkville, Antonio worked for Ware Landscaping as a landscaper. Antonio is married to Alicia Hill, and they are the proud parents of two daughters, Sasha and Savannah Hill. During his free time, Antonio enjoys playing and watching sports, working on his honeydew list, playing with his dog, Jesse, spending time with his family. Antonio and his family are members of 16th Section Church. Please join me in welcoming Antonio. And that concludes my comments this evening. Are there any comments from the members of the board? Any comment? Alderman Wynn. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Kemp, if you're here, the Mr. Kemp K1, as I call him, Mr. E Mr. Terry Kemp, mm -hmm. will you please stand? Mr. Kemp, of course, is our, our director of our electric department, and I want to say thank you so much. The residents of my 
Ward on Azalea Lane contacted me a couple of weeks ago, expressed some concerns about safety issues, and we had some um, trees, so to speak, trimmed down so that we could address that. And being proactive for this winter, we removed those trees off the power line. So I just want to say thank you so much for you and your crew for doing that. And the Starbucks coffee is on the way. Thanks again, Mr. Kemp. And last time, I failed to acknowledge two people from the building department, and that was Ms. Vicki Lowry and Jeff Lyles. How could I have forgotten both of them? Thanks for all of the work that they do up there. And the last person that I want to rec say tonight, I want to thank our police chief, Chief Nichols. If you're here, will you please stand? Today, I, I got my new badge out of, out of my mailbox, and I had an opportunity to read it. So this is our new badge that I new now uh, chief uh, design for so I say, want to say thank you so much for you new, for, for giving us this and last I want to um, have the welcome the MSU students from the social work department I understand that they're here with us tonight will you all stand please they're from Mississippi State University thank you. thank you for attending our meeting tonight I hope that it will be helpful for you I would love to be a fly on the wall in that discussion when you have it Thank you. I yield the floor, Mr. Mayor. Any further comments from the members of the board? I just, had a, I just had a quick one. Um, kudos to the water department. I had uh, one of my constituents mention yesterday when I saw them that um, they've got, you know, a lot of times folks want to fuss when something bad goes wrong. They don't take the time to let you know when something good's going on. And um, this person did. And they said they had apparently had some kind of issue with their water or toilet running excessively and, and weren't aware of it being upstairs. and. Uh, Apparently the water department's proactive and called and said they noticed a spike in their water and, and apparently they've got some kind of software or something that catches that kind of stuff and uh, contacted them and said come down there's a form you can fill out and it'll be reviewed and they may get some sort of credit or assistance on their bill and it won't be as high as it so uh, they were very pleased and I just wanted to pass that along to you guys. Thank you. Any further comments? Any further comments by the members of the board? Any further comments? All right. Seeing none, we'll move to citizen comments. At this time, any citizen wishing to make comments may do so by coming forward, introducing yourself, and you'll be recognized to speak for a maximum of three minutes. <coughs> Good evening to the mayor and board. My name is Alvin Turner Ward. Our, uh, uh, I'm the oldest boy. And I have two brothers. Uh, I have to try my best to uh, make them proud and make a uh, good impression. Uh, at the last meeting, we was having a concern about the cemetery uh, and the Amazon Cemetery. Uh, uh, but let us be mindful. Uh, if the police catch uh, uh, a man and woman in the cemetery going to jail, let them, let them be uh, mindful of animals. Uh, if a fence keep them out, let, let's do what's right. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Any further citizen comments? I'm Johnny Buckner. I'm pastor at New Horizons Christian Fellowship on Lynn Lane. Thank you for the opportunity to address the board. Uh, we have a cross that we're wanting to place on our property at the corner of Lynn Lane and Victory Lane. And I came up last week to see if there were any permits or any special things that need to be done before we put the cross up on our property. And it doesn't seem that there are any ordinances that address that issue. And so I was encouraged to come before you and to see if there was any objection from you to us for New Horizons Christian Fellowship putting placing a cross on our property. Are there any comments for Pastor Buckner? What are the height? 17 feet, seven, seven feet down in the ground, 17 feet tall. Uh, who in this room, Mayor, would be somebody that we could maybe get him to meet with tomorrow or the next day? or? Yeah, he, he did previously have a meeting uh, with the Community Development Department staff, uh, and uh, there effectively, effectively aren't any rules that govern this situation. I believe that's where he was encouraged to come forward. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, 
So uh, with, without any expressed objections or motion to the contrary by the board, uh, then it is the judgment of the Community Development Department that he, he should be uh, permitted to proceed. Mr. Mayor, may I be recommended? You may. Be through, sir. Were you through? Yeah. I've got Maynard, then I've got Walker. I think I'd like to recommend that maybe community development and the city attorney get together and just take a look at it and see where it is. I mean, this one's 17 feet. It could have just as easily been 117 feet. I mean, we need to, I think we need to determine what the standards are going to be there. Nothing against this cross, but it could could be anything that somebody wanted to put up that's not quote a sign. And I want to make sure that from a city standpoint that we're covered all the way around. That's that's agreeable with the board. Alderman Walker. I was going to have a very similar comment to Alderman Maynard's. Uh, that I was what I'm supportive of as well is uh, having the community development director and city attorney can take a look at that and come up with some suggestions, looking at both the sign ordinances and other things that are similar to come up with. Uh, something that may could be a standard moving forward without objection i'm going to have the city attorney the community development director uh, provide a report on this matter uh, to the board at a later date uh, any objection any objection saying none thank you pastor buckner <coughs> any further citizen comments any further citizen comments are there any further city citizen comments <laughs> any further citizen comments <coughs> seeing none the next matter you have before you is the consideration of the adoption and setting of the Starkville School District levy at 66.57 mil. Uh, for the fiscal year 2014-2015 in accordance with the requirements of Mississippi Code annotated 33, 37-57-1 and 21-33-45. And Dr. Holloway is here to present his budget. Uh, Dr. Holloway, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank My you. first year coming here, I had a, about a 40-minute PowerPoint. Oh, I'm, sorry, we, we have recusals. I'm going to recuse. All right. Alderman Walker is going to recuse himself uh, from this matter. I'll recuse as well. Alderman Maynard is going to recuse himself from this matter. All right. Dr. Holloway, we will give them just a second to get fully out of the room, and then the floor will be yours once again. Uh, two years ago, I had about a 40-minute PowerPoint to show you, and we got the feeling that it needed to be a lot briefer than that. Uh, last year, we cut it down to 15 minutes, and we again found out it needs to be somewhat briefer than that. So tonight, we're now shooting for about 10 minutes of, of your time. Uh, our board has approved a $55.7 million budget. Uh, the primary increase in this budget is that last year we had an intense strategic planning meeting with over 60 uh, community member members and <coughs> stakeholders. Several of you came to several of those meetings uh, and we came up with a list of 29 projects that needed to be done in the school district, uh, serious projects. Uh, and that committee ranked those projects. Uh, so to be able to afford that, our board elected last summer to do a three mil reverse levy for 10 years to be able to pay for that, those, those projects. Uh, and that makes up most of our increase uh, in the, the budget for this year. If you'll go to page three, it's it has yellow and green uh, coordinated colors on it. We have a list of those projects. Of the 29 projects that's listed there, 15 are complete, five are in progress, and we're making plans uh, to take care of the remaining uh, nine uh, projects. But they include several roofs, uh, and that's one of the bad things about putting roofs on buildings. You can spend several million dollars, but you don't see any difference uh, to the outside of the facility. So those are some things that we had to do. Uh, but we air conditioned Henderson, we replaced windows and new tile at Sutup. Uh, we have our new uh, surface for the uh, State Pro High School football stadium, which didn't get finished until Friday morning about 2 a.m. before the ball game, so we cut that one a little close. Uh, security fences, renovation at Henderson Ward Stewart Cafeteria, and we'll be uh, moving on with other projects a as we move forward. So that was three meals. Uh, of the increase, and that three mills raised about $7.5 million. 
The other surprise that we had in this budget was the legislature enacted a law that said that students must come to school 63% of the day to be able to be counted for our ADA, uh, which is our pupil count, to how we get our state money. Regardless if the child is there 63% of the day, we still have to have the same number of teachers, the same number of buses, the same number of textbooks and materials to provide for that. So when that law came in, we lost approximately $800,000 uh, in state funding uh, because of that change in the legislation. 92 districts across the state were affected by that same law. So we're anticipating that that will change but it does not, it will not affect us uh, in any positive way for this entire school year. So we lost 800,000. We had hoped that our reassessment would take care of a lot of that uh, loss, uh, but the reassessment only brought us up about $200,000 uh, in, uh, in new money, so it couldn't completely close the gap. Uh, if you'll go to the next page after the colored sheet, you'll see the comparison of our budget uh, from 2014 to 2015. 2014 was 47 million five hundred thousand seventy four dollars. It raised to 54 million six hundred ninety eight thousand dollars. The difference there is the seven million that we raised on the three mil levy that we have to account for in this budget whether we spend it or not. And I can tell you right now we can't spend it all that quick. We just can't handle that many projects at one time. But as that money is spent uh, these budgets will uh, ease back to a more normal rate. Uh, if you go to the next page, it has a pie chart uh, that 42% uh, of our budget is dedicated to instruction, another 26% for support services. That 68% is all goes to student expenditures uh, in, in the school district. Uh, the other thing our school district does that we have 25 uh, teachers that the district pays for that the state does not pay for and that's our drama that's our music that's our dedication to the arts and that's also our trying to keep our student teacher ratios between 20 and 22 uh, uh, you know trying to understand that teachers have a very hard burden and if we overload those classrooms that they're not going to be as uh, effective uh, the next page you see the actual items that we added uh, and our, the only things that we're adding is because we're having increased students in special education and uh, one first grade teacher at Sutta. Uh, we had a grant for these guidance counselors that went out and we decided that we needed to keep those guidance counselors to serve our students. Uh, and then there was a change in programming at Overstreet. Project Lead the Way is an engineering program that we have and also we've added robotics. <coughs> been very well received. Uh, at the middle school and high school level. The last page that you see there shows our current budget at 6657, uh, which is roughly three and a half mils more than we had for last year. You see in 2015 uh, 16 it drops to 64, and 2016 17 it drops to 61.38. So we see a slight, slight spike this year. We expect that spike to continue to go down as the future moves moves forward. Uh, that's all I have, unless there's something that you might have a question on. Questions or comments from the members of the board for Dr. Holloway? Any questions or comments from the members of the board? Are there any questions or comments? Seeing no, none. Uh, Alderman Ball. Is there in the future, is there any room for a new high school in the future? Uh, that question has been asked, and I would say in this community there's probably a, a, a pretty good appetite for that. Uh, but the reality is we've invested so much in athletics and the stadium, I think that that is probably not going to happen for quite some time. With consolidation, though, we have talked about a 6th and 7th grade school, and we're working to secure <coughs> state funding as well as some under, other funding sources <coughs> to make that a reality as soon as, we, as it can happen. Uh, that facility right now, the plan would be for it to be built on the campus of Mississippi State University. It would be a demonstration school that would house not only our students but also uh, MSU uh, education professors and be a model for teachers across the state to see effective 
teaching. The design of it allows classrooms with windows and places for students to sit and observe and not be in the classroom, be unobtrusive, but yet they can see excellent teaching uh, being taught. Any further questions or comments for Dr. Holloway? Well, the McCarthy. close uh, sixth and seventh grade school, would that be about on that where each and every kid goes? Or that every, every sixth and seventh grader in the county and Starkville School District would be on this campus, yes, sir. Is that a school that places them from there, or is that something that each and every each and every kid goes to the MSU school and then they, they continue together? I mean, that's a great question because we spent hours debating that. And our conclusion with the uh, consolidation committee that that school had to serve every child. It couldn't just be a select Damn. portion of children that you pull out. And so, uh, it was designed for every sixth grader in the district being Starkville Octiva Hall will go to that school. And it'll be state of the art. I mean, it, it will be a school that you would be very proud of. Thank you. Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? <clears throat> Seeing none, thank you, Dr. Holloway. Well, I, I forgot, I have Board Chairman Lee Brand here, uh, Secretary uh, Jenny Turner here, and our CFO, Rob Logan, to help. and. Uh, uh, Rob's helped a lot putting this information together and I appreciate the support of Dr. Brand and the school board. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Dr. Holloway. Recognize you may. Dr. Holloway, we are so proud of our yellow jackets. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, a motion to uh, uh, approve the school district levy would be in order. So moved. So, motion has been made by Alderman Little to adopt uh, the Starkville School District tax levy at 66.57 mills for the fiscal year 2014-2015 in accordance with the requirements of Mississippi Code Annotated 37-57-1 and 21-33-45 as presented. Alderman Little, is that your motion? Do I hear a second? Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Little, do you wish to speak on the merits? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. By a vote of four in favor with one against, this measure passes. Thank you all. And we'll give the two recusals a moment to re-enter the room. <laughs> and while they are re-entering, uh, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Havlin, if you could come forward. I'm going to ask Alderman Little to introduce this matter, uh, but uh, there, there may uh, be an opportunity uh, for the two of you to dialogue with the board. Alderman Little, would you like to introduce? I will. Like a man. Uh, I learned just a few years ago that uh, the city of Starkville did not have any sort of minimum design standards, and over the course of the past year, I've spoke with a few people, some board members casually, and uh, some other members and uh, citizens in the town regarding what their thoughts were, and, and most, pretty much everyone I talked to was very receptive to moving forward with some sort of minimum design standards here in the city. They, some, some most recently have contacted me and said, what's, you know, what's taking you so long, you know? Um, I have a friend who's on the board of Alderman down in the city of Flowood, and they adopt. He's in, I think, his fourth term, and they adopted these several years ago. And he said it's just a noticeable difference um, on the design standards of what they've done to his city. Uh, he said you can go down and look at the old part of Lakeland, and then you can go to the new part of Lakeland, and it makes a um, it's just an obvious impact on, on the uh, aesthetics of the community. Um, one thing I've noticed here, uh, and and Vice Mayor pointed it out uh, years ago. Uh, he's been on the board for a long time. Years ago, when uh, Fire Station Number Four was built down on the corner of Academy and uh, South Montgomery, it, the board at that time insisted that that structure have a uh, brick facade. That's a metal building. Um, they also, uh, before they built the Dollar General on Louisville, correct me if I'm wrong, Vice Mayor, but uh, they required that the uh, metal building, which was the Dollar General on Louisville, have a brick facade. Um, another building I noticed recently and confirmed um, is was built by Frank Jones on Academy on the north side, uh, Callaway Orthodontics. Uh, Shaw Nichols has his all-state agency there and a few other businesses are there. 
that's a metal building with a brick facade. Looks very nice. Um, I believe that, um, and Mark Nicholas is also building a retail center over there near Chick-fil-A, a metal building with a brick facade. And, they, and those guys, you know, they took it on their own there to, to, to do that and make it look very pleasing and aesthetically good for our citizens. Um, I believe, you know, I think the citizens of Starkville are conscious uh, and they desire uh, the community to look nice and uh, we get one chance of putting our, making a first impression and putting a uh, best foot forward and I think this is something we need to have, at least have at minimum have a conversation on. I'm not sure what the will of the board will be but uh, I think it's something we need to talk about. Um, several of us had mentioned folding uh, minimum design standards into uh, a comprehensive uh, plan, a comprehensive review coming up the next year. Uh, that's fine, but I thought it might be better to go ahead and at least have this conversation now and see if the appetite was right to move forward. Uh, a few weeks ago, I tasked uh, the community development director with uh, and uh, city planner to come up with some sort of minimum design standards and what they thought we should have here in the city. And uh, I want to commend them for their speed and getting that done. Uh, the conciseness, I like the fact that it's it's one page, not quite a page, um, and it's just it's simple. Um, you know, you're not going to have to hire an attorney to interpret it. It's not you know it's not 45 pages cumbersome, and, and I, I really like that. I appreciate your work on that. Um, Contrary to the Daily News headlines, Zach, not throwing stones at you, but contrary to that, it was somewhat misleading. If you read the headline, other, you know, I've got it here somewhere. It said um, no metal buildings would be allowed in the city of Starkville. That was not correct. Metal buildings will still be allowed in the city of Starkville, subject to the proper zones. Manufacturing zones, as, as they have, have been always, they'll still be allowed. Um, but there are certain areas that they would not without a facade. Um, and I've got the uh, ordinance here, and I will read the ordinance since it is so so short. So bear with me. Would be add to Appendix A, Zoning Article 7, District Regulations, Section G, H, J, K, and L, General Requirements for Building Facades and Parking Lot Surfaces. The regulations below will be added to Section J, K, and L. It will apply to all property located in Zones B1, C1, and C2. These regulations will be added to sections G and H. It will apply to multifamily structures located in zones R5. All, resident, uh, all building facades that are visible from the public right-of-way or adjacent property zone residential shall meet these requirements. A, the following materials are allowed for use on, on a building facade. Brick, wood, fiber cement siding, which is hardy board, stucco, natural stone, and split-face concrete masonry units that are tinted and textured. B, the following materials are not, to, not for use on the building facade. Smooth face concrete masonry units, uh, vinyl siding, tilt up concrete panels, prefabricated panels, EFAS, which is exterior insulation and finish systems. EFAS is permitted to be used for trim and architectural accents. C, the primary facade colors shall be low reflective, low reflectance, subtle, neutral, or earth, earth tones. The use of high intensity metallic flake or fluorescent colors would be prohibited. Uh, item two, all parking lots adjacent to public right-of-way shall be paved either entirely or, or with a combination of the following, asphalt, concrete, porous pavement, concrete pavers, or brick pavers. Gravel can be used temporarily as a parking surface for a period no longer than 12 months upon the approval of the community development director. All temporary gravel lots must, must provide ADA accessible parking and access ways in accordance with ADA guidelines. And we would add under Appendix A, Zoning, Article 2, Definition, Section A, Definitions and Rules of Construction, Facade, the portion of any exterior elevation on the building extended from grade to the top of the parapet, wall, or eaves for the entire length of the building. <coughs> Stucco, a mixture of Portland cement, sand, and, and a small percentage of lime used to form a hard covering for textured exterior walls. EFIS is not will not be considered as stucco. I yield the floor this time. Any questions or comments from the members of the board? Alderman, Alderman Carper. Uh, I personally am going to say I, I, I kind of agree with it and kind of don't. So I'm still on the fence, and as of this second, I haven't made my mind up. One thing I was going to say is how does this address uh, the innovation district and things like that as far as, you know, there's 
if somebody wanted to come put up a, a flex steel type operation or uh, any kind of major manufacturing, which is what I would want to see this town have, but uh, how does that affect those kind of places? Manufacturing areas are not included. Manufacturing zones are not included. In so area. everything with the Innovation District is in manufacturing. It would be. It hasn't been rezoned. It yet. hasn't been rezoned, but if the area was rezoned to M1 or manufacturing, um, this ordinance would not be in play. But as it sits now, what is its zone? It's multiple of zones. Uh, ranging from C2 to um, residential zoning districts. Okay. Just for public information, what, if any, impact if this were embraced by the board would it have on all those pre existing prefabricated buildings at this time? They would be grandfathered, but if they did a major renovation, mm -hmm. um, uh, fifty percent or more of the value of the building, or if the building was destroyed by like fire or natural natural disaster, they would have to adhere to this ordinance. Further questions or comments? I'd like to make one comment too. Um, this is just a, a small step forward. Uh, many communities go as far as having a um, architectural review committee, and. Um, where you know, you've got to bring your plans and, and this is, none of that's going to be part of this. This is a very simplified version and uh, with the intent of just making things look a little nicer. Alden Perkins. Very brief, Mayor. Thank you. Gentlemen from three, if the board moves forward with this, would you have any objection to removing the language there from that says a, um, a gravel parking lot may be allowed up to one year subject to approval of the community development director. Would you have any objection to that removing that language? We, we had discussed that earlier today and I want to ask, you know, we talked about that and uh, I mentioned it to the community development director and he said that his logic behind leaving it and, and that we can decide this is not necessarily a final draft but if you'd like to elaborate on where, sure. where it's came staff, into play in the past. Staff placed the language in um, ordinance, uh, draft ordinance, ordinance as is, and that many developments are done in section or phases. And um, concreting, um, sometimes the equipment that's used in construction can actually harm the concrete just due to the type of equipment and its size and weight. Um, so this would allow, you know, the development to be uh, constructed over time, but um, before they could receive a final CO, the parking lot would have to uh, be paved, but we felt like 12 months was long enough to complete a phase. And Mr. Sanders, may I my last question since you brought that up? Mr. Sanders, if the board, I'm just asking the question, let's say if the board moves forward with this in the affirmative and leave that language in there, I would suggest that you have some type of objective criteria. So, you know, any decision will not be arbitrary and capricious. In other words, you have some, some guidelines in case somebody want to get a gravel parking lot. You know, I just didn't want nothing before we are inconsistent. But if, you know, you're satisfied with doing that, and, you know, that's fine. I just wanted to bring that out. Well, this is the first hearing, so um, staff will take another look. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. And um, bring this back to the board, of course, for the, for the second hearing. Yeah, and just let me know about what your thoughts are, you know, whatever. And that, I'd be interested to do that. And thank you so much. We'll be glad to. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Further questions or comments from the members of the board? I don't know I'd just like to say that I think this is a, a step forward uh, for our community. Um, these are minimum design standards that will go a long way in, in helping people uh, have a different and a new perception of what Starville is. Uh, Starville's come a long way and we're continuing to grow at a very rapid pace. I believe this is absolutely a, a step in the right direction coupled with comprehensive planning that we're going to be doing over the next uh, year or so has an opportunity to uh, really put us in a position to, to move forward in a way that is going to uh, benefit most of the community and really attract uh, visitors and uh, new residents to our community. So certainly in support of this minimum design standards. Further questions or comments from the members of the board? Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? Seeing none, thank you gentlemen. All right, at this time we will begin the public comment portion of the public hearing and any citizen wishing to speak on Alderman Little's proposed ordinance revision may do so by coming forward, introducing yourself, and you'll be recognized to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman, my name is Irving Pollock. I'm the engineering manager at Gulf States Manufacturers. We're a metal building systems manufacturer here in Starville since 1968. 
I've had the opportunity to read the proposal, and I'd like to make a couple of comments with regard to the proposal, as well as in giving an invitation to both the board, uh, the city planner, the chief administrative officer, and the community development director. A couple of comments. In the proposal, it uses the word prefabricated steel panels would be disallowed. I do believe the board understands maybe one facet of that, but there's a multitude of different styles of panels that could be considered prefabricated that I think unintentionally the board, by accepting this, would be excluding from use in Starville. And they have been proven on many occasions across the United States and municipalities much larger than this one to provide <coughs> both a sustainable finish as well as an extremely aesthetically pleasing finish for a building. That ties into my second one, which is an invitation. I know the board wants to make a decision that's informed, has all the facts, has all the knowledge base, and Gulf States Manufacturers, which is part of the new core buildings group, which is the larger, largest provider of metal building systems across the United States today, would invite the board and the three people I uh, mentioned to come to Gulf States. Let us show you what can be done, has been done, so that as you consider both the information you've been given and as you consider possible changes to that, that you can make an informed decision. Gulf States has provided metal building systems for churches, schools, hangars, uh, throughout not only Starkville but across the United States and even as far as Hawaii and, and Maine. And so we are very adept at making buildings be aesthetically pleasing, especially working with design professionals like architects, that you really cannot tell a metal building when you see it. That doesn't say that metal panels are not pleasing because we have some in uses with other materials that give a very aesthetically pleasing uh, aspect to the building. So I'd ask the board that if you let me know who I need to discuss it with, I'd be glad to set up that meeting. We'd be glad to give you a presentation and show you what can be done and has been done across the United States. Yes, sir. I was letting you know you have one minute. Right. Mr. Pilot. Yes. I appreciate you coming tonight. I enjoyed the conversation we had earlier today. Absolutely. And um, the material that you guys sent showing the other type panels other than just the rib panels. That I, are there any of those? Um, I guess architecturally designed panels that have been used here in the city that you're aware of? I'm sure there are, both in Gulf States buildings and buildings. And I think the thing the board, and maybe you don't realize it, by using the word prefabricated panel, you've excluded panels that are, that are made not only by metal building systems, but providers beyond that. Insulated pa panel systems, panels that come with from structure rock, which gives you a rock finish on the outside, but you can't really tell it's a metal panel. There's a multitude of panels that can be used as well as some metal panels that we fabricate in conjunction with other materials that allow you to do that. And uh, as I said, give you a very aesthetically pleasing building. Our general manager would have been here tonight, but he's on business uh, in California this week and asked me if I'd come in his behalf, offer this invitation. And as I said, Mr. Mayor, if you'll tell me who I could set that meeting up with, we'd be more than happy to set that meeting up so the board could make an informed decision with all the knowledge that you could have. And what I'll do is I'll have my assistant uh, reach out to the members of the board, and we'll see who's interested uh, in setting up a meeting. Okay. Thank Appreciate you, thank you Mr. Pilot. Take you up on that for sure. Good thank you. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Daniel, do you guys, are y'all familiar with some of these um, some of them, no. architecturally designed panels that he's been talking about? Really so let's add him to our list. Can we do that? I'm interested to see what they're on the other. I just would hate to see the board exclude materials by the broad use of the word prefabricated steel panels okay. that would give it, exclude finishes that would make a very aesthetically pleasing concept. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Pilot. Judge Mill. <clears throat> Good evening, my name is Alvin Ward Seven. Let us remember that our, uh, we have police, we have our uh, firemen that have to, if a fire, uh, if something come up in a building, they have to be able to get in and out safely without no one get hurt. Let us think about first responders. If we make it to where that they might suffocate or either get trapped. Uh, I'm sorry, lad, that don't help. Now, let us think about them. They have to be there to try to get us out. <coughs> and if you make it complicated, you could lose firemen, you could lose police officers, you could e even lose citizens. Uh, uh, think, think, think about 
too much changing could do more harm than here. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Judge Mills. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I'm Jim Mills. I think most of you know me. Uh, I picked up a paper of the morning and looked at this paragraph on the front pages about the metal buildings and so forth. And I could not believe that we've got a citizen sitting on this board that would just arbitrarily take this on herself to uh, restrict the rules and the ordinance that uh, can be very much a benefit benefit to the people of Stark. First place is, I don't worry, nobody's took it in consideration. A metal building is, is at least five times the life of any other building that we're talking about, putting walls and so forth. Up. You have cheaper insurance, and it can be designed, a building can be designed by anything that can look the way you want it to. I was with Gulf States Manufacturing 34 years. I traveled all over the world delivering buildings to different job sites. Now, I don't know where any of you want to take the time and expense to make your trip out to Las Vegas. Been since uh, Mr. Little has talked about where he's been to different places. I'd like for him to go out to Las Vegas, Nevada, and look at a building. It's a prefab metal building, a total of 96 tractor and trailer loads from Stark to Mississippi. And it's a beautiful insurance building, Mr. Little. And then the next thing, we, I don't know where we've took consideration, is that when you start to go into a business, uh, Okay, I'll take just a minute, but I, I want to make my point as well as the aldermen's have made their point. The next point is, do you feel like that this could be a damaging to the citizen of Starkville if we put Gulf State's business out of business and they move to Louisville or Cosesco or West Point? How do you think that's going to affect the people of Starkville? That's what we're talking about, Starkville. I was on this board myself, and I, I never came up with anything like this. I didn't sit down and spend time and call in individuals all over the city of Starkville and getting their opinion before I voted on something. I say I'm not going to have a time to uh, Judge Mills, your time explain. Expired. I know I understand all of that, too. I'm going to have to gather with you if you I keep understand. going. Yes, sir. Further public comments? My name is Bo Richardson. I'm in Ward 3. One thing I like to say is if this proposal goes through the way it is today, you have tractor supply, which is less than two years old, would not be acceptable. You have the Travis Outlaw Center building, which not would be not be acceptable. None of your fire departments would be acceptable, not even the one on the corner of Academy Road, because it has metal panels on it. If you're going to make some changes to it, don't make it where it's so restriction that you've got to do it. From what I understand, you've got to do it where it can't be seen from any side, any side of the building from any road. Well, you take tractor supply over there, uh, that's all four sides of the building. And I honestly don't believe that tractor supply is a is a eyesore to the community. We've recently built Ferguson Enterprise, which is right next to it, which is a 100% metal building. Added $800,050 to the uh, construction cost, which will be taxes for the city, and it is not a eyesore of a building. So I too agree that you may make some changes in it, but saying that you're going to change it and make it on all three sides or any side that's seen from a road is entirely too much. Uh, the buildings that y'all are talking about that look bad, most of them are 25 years old. There's a lot of other buildings in town that are built that are wood buildings or other construction in this town 
that look bad also. So, you know, you pick it on one particular thing, and it, it, it's a preference of what you like. What I hear you saying is you like the brick and you like to drive it. Some people like the metal. Evidently, the city likes it also because they have it in all their fire departments and they have it in the facilities that they have. So don't force something down the citizen's throat or the developer's throat that the city themselves is not willing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Do we have any further public comments? Any further public comments at this time? Any further public comments? All right, seeing none, that will conclude the public comment portion in this, our first public hearing on the proposed revisions uh, to the ordinance by Alderman Little. Uh, are there any concluding comments by the members of the board? Any concluding comments by the members of the board? Alderman Little. I'd like to say I appreciate the feedback, Bo and Judge Mills and, and any others. Um, that's, that's what we need to have the conversation. This is a work in progress. It can still be tweaked over the next couple of weeks. and. Uh, just see where it goes. Thank you all for coming. We we plan on taking the tour that um, Mr. Pilot has, has offered, and we'll get the logistics worked out on that. And whoever wants to go, I'm, I plan on being there too. Any further concluding comments from the members of the board? Are there any further concluding comments, Alderman Carver? We're going to have another public hearing on this, right? We are. Sixteen. Well, kind of, kind of what. My thoughts, I'm starting to get it. I mean, just being completely honest is, uh, I know where you're coming with this, and I know why you're, why you, why you're coming with this, and it's pretty much two completely separate uh, ideals. The gravel parking lot, I'm probably 100% in favor of not having a gravel long-term parking lot. Uh, the second thing, though, the metal buildings is kind of like, you know, everything, half or more of our development lately has been metal buildings, and I think that personally, just my, uh, I guess the, the way I line up, but my beliefs is I'm, I'm more, I'm pretty pro-business, and I think if you had this, you know, it would probably be restrictive to businesses. So maybe if we can find some way, I know you're the expert, uh, you know, on, on what we could get that would get the look. I mean, what's happening is we're wanting a, everybody's wanting an aesthetically pleasing town, but I don't want to do it in a way that would hamper, you know, development. Because here we are, we've had several nice, uh, you know, buildings that have come in that are, are are providing more jobs for the city, but I think I, I think we need to tweak this. I think it's uh, I think everybody wants to have a. I know what Alderman Little's wanting. He's wanting a, a better looking town, um, a long term, and I applaud you for that. And just if we can find a way to make this work for for the citizens, and then also um, you know for the employees and employers, are going to have buildings that, that they can put up that are cost efficient and cost effective. Because uh, you know if we start doing things that are going to just completely drive away potential, you know, businesses that are coming in from out of town. If they can, if it's something that they can do in a manufacturing district that we won't allow them to do, but a Lewis for Will or, you know, any other town for that matter, uh, I don't want to do it. That will drive them away. Does that make sense? So, I mean, I know, I know what you're trying to do. I just don't think that we're right there yet. Um, so, you know, I still, I, I'm going to tell you, I'd probably be in favor of the long-term gravel parking lots. And what's happening, this is all probably going to throw it out there, is coming up from across Strawberry High, and, and you're seeing a development that, um, you know, we, you just got a lot of, putting a lot of gravel on the road, a lot of things like that in an area that we probably don't need that. But, um, so, you know, that's kind of where I'm at on those. And maybe if you got to, to get my vote, if you got to split them up and, Address them separately. You know that might be a way to go with that. So, thank you. Any further concluding comments from the members of the board? Any further concluding comments? Seeing none, that will conclude this our first public hearing on proposed changes uh, to the code of ordinances regarding minimum design standards. Uh, next, you have the second public hearing on potential changes to the utilities ordinance as represented uh, as recommended by uh, Mr. Devlin. Mr. Devlin, would you like to come forward and introduce it? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, primary reason we had to get into this ordinance and revise it was we had to add um, some components to comply with the administrative order on consent that we're under with the EPA. And while we're at it, uh, Mr. Latimer and I, uh, with his help, we're trying to, to go through there and try to whittle it down some and make it a little more user-friendly. Um, there appeared to be a lot of items that 
in there that uh, appear to be more policy matters than they were legislative matters, um, and we pulled those <coughs> out. Um, there are a couple of uh, requirements in the ordinance that seemed a bit draconian uh, to me anyway. One is the uh, charging uh, or assessing a fee to, to uh, people who install fire suppression systems. Um, so we removed the, you know, the requirement of that fee being paid. And then the other one uh, that we did remove was a, uh, there was a requirement, the ordinance, um, it, and it kind of applies to the 1998 annexed territories um, sure. That said, if you're, uh, if, if somebody, if we get a, a sewer connection to your property, okay. you're compelled to hook up to the uh, to the sewer system within 90 days. Uh, I know personally, I've worked with a lot of landowners in these areas, and they've gladly given us easements to cross their property, and they have perfectly functioning septic systems, large enough tracts of land. Um, um, they're in compliance with the Department of Health. It seemed. Uh, seemed a little bit uh, unfair that we would turn around in 90 days, uh, make them spend money that they didn't have to to connect to the to the sewer system. So we've, uh, and they'll typically, when those systems fail, they'll want to connect to the, the available sewer anyway. So we just decided to pull that requirement out. Um, and then, like I said, the rest of them are just basically to, to whittle that thing down and, and make it smaller, shorter, more user friendly. Questions or comments from the members of the board? Any questions or comments from the members of the board? Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll now move to public comments. Uh, anyone wishing to speak on the proposed ordinance change may do so by coming forward, introducing yourself, and you'll be recognized to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Mr. Turner and Mr. Burnham. Good evening. Again, my name is Adam Turner. Uh, let us start our, uh, making things so stressful and complicated until it's stressful it people out. Because if we don't do that, our, uh, being the vice president of the NACP, I'll be getting a lot of calls. Uh, let us treat people the way that we want to be treated. That it's the right way to do it, it's the wrong way to do it. Uh, you wouldn't want to be stressed. Uh, don't stress no one here. Uh, because it'll be, do not do that. Uh, I'll be getting called. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Mr. Burnham. I'm Ila Burnham from Ward 2. Uh, Mr. Devlin said why uh, there were some proposed changes that needed to be made in the uh, Public Utilities Ordinance. The current ordinance in Section 110-27 and the proposed changes in Section 110-172 put a lot of people, as well as almost every plumber in this city, in violation of the ordinance. And I think that in going through the changes and necessary changes, that, that if you put that many people in violation automatically uh, to the ordinance, then something needs to be done and perhaps a change. The idea of knowing that this condition exists and just looking past it or just accepting it and saying, yeah, we know that's a problem, uh, and, and, but we're not going to do anything about it, it states that no person except a duly authorized employee of the city of Starkville shall turn the water on or off at the stop cock. Now how many of you have gone out into your yard and, and turned the water off? Not by the required valve that the city requires be, that be between the discharge side of the meter and your home, but go out there and turn it off at the meter. And that's where they're in violation. In, in my home, uh, that valve that the city requires between discharge and the home was buried 12 inches below the ground. I couldn't find it. I had no choice but to turn the water off at the meter until a plumber found it. And, and, and that valve is still 12 inches under the ground at my home. So I think something needs to be done so that our plumbers and our citizens are not in violation of the ordinance and to just accept it and go on and say, yeah, we know that's the situation. To me, it's not acceptable. To you, it may be a small point, 
But then again, you know, I'm a stickler for small points, as you know. So thank you. Mr. Burnham, thank what was that second citation? I heard 110.27. What was the Yeah, other? that's the current one. 110-172 is in the proposed changes. And it's also addressed in 110-173, which refers you back to 110-172. We'll take a look at that. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burnham. Are there any further public <laughs> comments on the proposed ordinance position? Any further public comments? Any further public comments? Seeing none, are there any concluding comments from the members of the board? Any concluding comments from the members of the board? Any concluding comments? Seeing none, that will conclude this. The second public hearing on the uh, proposed ordinance changes from Mr. Depp. The next matter you have before you is discussion and consideration of Mayor and Alderwoman Wynn to attend the 2014 National League of Cities Conference. Uh, it's, uh, it has been a conference that the city has sent a delegation to for the last uh, several years, uh, and uh, uh, I, I believe it is important uh, for us to have uh, city representation at uh, the premier uh, event for uh, cities in the United States of America, and uh, also uh, the educational material at this conference uh, is second to none. Uh, we do have proposed a smaller delegation this year than in years past. Uh, uh, Alderman Wynn uh, is the only alderman that is able to accommodate the event with her schedule. Uh, so this proposal is for Alderman Wynn and me uh, to make the trip as the uh, startful delegation to the National League of Cities Conference this year. Discussion. Alderman Perkins. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, it's um, certainly good uh, to go on trips at times to um, <coughs> acquire uh, valuable information that would be uh, very uh, beneficial um, to the city as a whole. Uh, this board has authorized, I know, uh, a trip for members of the governing body uh, to go to Seattle, Washington. They've gone to our nation's capital, the uh, District of Columbia, and now we have a trip to Washington, D.C. Even though this is a, a budgeted matter, um, I do not uh, think that this is a good time personally uh, to expend these funds. It appears as of this date and time that there is, and not that I'm advocating for it, that, that there's not going to be a pay raise for uh, city employees, it appears that. And uh, as a result of that, it certainly does not look good, in my opinion, for um, members of this governing body to be taking what I call a very um, expensive trip uh, uh, using the taxpayers' funds. I do not think that it uh, looks good uh, in the eyes of our city employees and in the eyes of, of others uh, to be doing this trip. Uh, I personally think that, you know, uh, that, that this is something that um, Perhaps um, we need to resume doing, uh, doing at the uh, sometime next year. Uh, certainly, this board has been very generous uh, with the travel as compared to past board, boards. Um, this was basically unheard of, sending a, a lot of members of the governing body on trips. But you know, that's um, the the will of each mayor and board. And certainly, I'm not speaking against any particular individual. I'm just talking about the subject matter. And it's good to go and learn things. So. Uh, please do not construe my being against the educational aspect, but I think, you know, um, we owe that to our city employees and, and other taxpayers that this is a, a tough time to be going at, at the expense. Uh, we need to save every dollar that we can. Every dollar counts. Uh, we got a lot of things without my having to enumerate those, and, you know, we just need to... Um, to, to keep some more money in the general fund as opposed to spending it just because it is available. So for all of those articulated reasons, um, you know, I, I think that we should uh, go and, and Mayor, just in case the, the board moves forward, let me say to our honorable CAO here, uh, Mr. Adams, now you're, let me make sure I get a good understanding in case the board moves forward. Now you're not asking to go, right? No, sir. You're not wanting to go? No, sir. Okay, I just want to be clear because you know, the board 
has your plate full and running over. You know, we just need you at City Hall doing some things. I just want to make sure the board goes forward with this that we don't talk about the mayor and the lady from two. So this was nothing I said was against anybody. You know, this is just consistent with my philosophy and ideals of things. So, uh, but of course, you know, I'm going to vote against this. It may pass, but I have to say that somebody has to say uh, these things to exert the leadership at the table. But I just, you know, would like to see us resume that sometime next year. Mayor, you know, we appreciate your desire to go, uh, but uh, whatever the will of the board, and uh, but I'm respectfully requesting for the colleague, let's just kind of table this matter for now. No employees pay raise as of this moment, and um, and let's just wait to next year. Thank you, Mayor. Further discussion? Um, may I be recognized? You may. When we travel on behalf of our state and attend conferences, the educational component of that is awesome. It's amazing because we get a chance to learn. You can't always learn being here at Starkville. Sometimes you've got to step outside of your comfort zone. I have been able to take classes on economic development, advanced economic development, local economic development, learn those strategies, the implementation process. My background is in education. I was educated in elementary education slash TESOL certification and English. Having said that, it didn't prepare me to learn about general obligation bonds, tax increment financing. Guess what? My coursework when I travel out of town has provided me to be able to do that. Now, the vice mayor spoke to the fact that he's concerned about our taxpayer dollars and employee pay raises. If you know anything about me, I support our employees receiving tax, tax uh, employee pay raises. The vice mayor in our budget meeting a couple of weeks ago said that he would advocate or support doing nothing. Those were his words, that he would support doing nothing. I'm a proponent of seeing to it that all of our city employees receive our raises. Having said all of this, again, I would say to you is this. I have been blessed and fortunate to be able to take the classes that prepare me for the role that I serve in as alderman to represent War II. Now, the vice mayor says that he's concerned about taxpayers' dollars. Last year in July, after we took office, we went to, we attended Mississippi Municipal League. The vice mayor also attended the Miss, Mississippi Municipal League. He did not attend classes. He was there to receive an award. Taxpayers paid for that almost at $700. I attended that conference, and any board member can tell you, I was in class every day taking my coursework. Based on that coursework, on August the 5th, a measure was before our city, and it was on economic development. You all thank goodness that I had the coursework that I did to be able to make a sound decision for my city. Because guess what? It's called an innovation district for manufacturing jobs. It was not a research part, but manufacturing jobs. It stands to set our city in such a great spot. Our school district would benefit from it immediately once those jobs take place. Those jobs in that manufacturing district, and let me tell you about a manufacturing district. Those are jobs that benefit a lot of people that may not have an opportunity to attend college for whatever reason. And let me say this, I'm a big proponent of attending college, but at the end of the day, as an educator, I understand that college is not for everyone. So guess what? Sometimes a manufacturing job is what people, and especially when they are my color and look like me, have an opportunity to get. Those jobs are for thirty-five dollars to $45,000. Based on the coursework that I attended, I supported that. I got on the telephone with people in our community, said, call your alderman, because it was so important that our city government embrace that. Having said that, Mr. Mayor, I have a motion. Move approval for Mayor and Alderman Wynn to attend the 2014 National League of Cities and your conference of city in Austin, Texas with advanced travel not exceed $2,750. Motion has been made by Alderman Wynn for the mayor and Alderman Wynn to attend the 2014 National League of Cities Annual Congress of City Conference in Austin, Texas with advanced travel not to exceed $2,750. Alderman Wynn, is that your motion? Yes. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Little. Alderman Wynn, do you wish to speak on the mayor? No. 
Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman Walker. I just have a clarifying question. Uh, is the 2750, is that uh, each or is that the total sum for both tracks? That's the total sum. You, you are spending much less on this conference than you have in years past, and that is mostly related to number of people. We're sending less, but also in comparison to last year, it costs more to travel to Seattle than it does to Austin. Sure. So that will just vary uh, based on where it is. Oh, it is per person? Per person. Oh, per person. So it's twenty seven fifty per person to yeah. go to Austin, Texas. Okay. Uh, the other question is, is I know this has been budgeted. Will this be coming out uh, since this is a request for advance? I'm not sure when the conference is. Will this come out of the current? November. Budget? Some will have to come out of the current for the booking of the rooms. Yeah. Uh, but the, the rooms in the flight. Uh, So that comes out of the current yes. travel budget. How 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 where are we on the current travel budget? The uh, Warren Bargain budget, uh, as it stands now, is at eight thousand nine hundred and fifteen dollars and seventy one cents approximately. Um, if we approve the claims docket as of tonight, then the mayor's budget will be negative six uh, sixty one hundred dollars. May I be recognized? You may. We uh, Alderman, we uh, we approve the summary budget. Uh, so as it relates to the budget that we've, that we've advertised, uh, it, we use individual lines to, for internal tracking, but as it relates to the Mayor and Board of Aldermen's budget, it's, it's within the statutorily required balance point. And so you're saying that the bulk of this trip would be out of the, what is currently in this, the current budget? Yes. Thank you. Further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Saying none. All those in favor of Alderman Wynn's motion, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. By a vote of four in favor with three against, this measure passes. Did you have four? Yes, four. Yeah. Yes, four, four. Yeah. Okay. You were looking kidding. like I got the count wrong. Yeah, no, no, okay. Count, no. All right. Uh, the next matter on the agenda is the discussion and consideration of <laughs> setting public hearings for the adoption of resolution setting the city of Starkville tax levy at 21.98 mills. Alderman Maynard. And, 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 and. Yes, sir. Mr. Adams, I'll ask one quick question. Um, our, our millage rate for the next coming year is set at 21.98. That is the same as the current year that we're in. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. And we don't anticipate adding, obviously, the additional millage for the innovation park this year, even though we've approved it. Can you explain to the citizens here why that is? Uh, yeah, yes, Alderman. Uh, it's, it is a timing issue. The, as it is proposed to me, of course, this is all subject to the uh, to the board's uh, to the board's approval. So this is this is what I know as as it's as I've learned it from a meeting that the mayor had with uh, with uh, our economic development, uh, uh, I guess, uh, consultant and our, and our financial consultant. And the uh, it comes down to timing uh, where those bonds are. Have been approved for the resolution to issue those bonds has been approved by this body. We are still within the 45 day period. Are we have we cleared have we cleared the clock for the reverse referendum? Oh no, that that was cleared last fall. Okay, that was they passed the resolution of intent last fall. All right, and so the uh, the the idea is uh, those bonds could issue. I guess as soon as the documents were ready. My understanding is uh, that 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 will not happen. Of course, if those were issued immediately. That millage would have to be would have to be levied as part of the next year because a payment would be due immediately. Uh, Vice Mayor, yes. No, no. Um, the, my, my understanding is that, that that those bonds are proposed to issue after the start of the calendar year, which would be uh, which it's believed uh, by that group would allow us to uh, delay the levy for uh, for one fiscal year. And by by delaying that levy. I know last year when we raised the millage two mills, there was issues brought up from apartment owners. I, actually, I believe Miss Brule brought up the fact that uh, while she supported last year, uh, 
decision, it would have been nice for her and any other owners of property to have a little advance time notice so they could adjust their rents before the coming year. This will allow, number one, us to be able to delay that for a year, letting everybody prepare for that. Um, although I was recused, I have heard that the, uh, Dr. Holloway mentioned uh, in the past that they were, they were dropping, potentially dropping some mills off next year as well, which would actually help balance that out. So there may be a net, a net zero effect of taxes going up. If, if, if that were the will of, of, of this body and the, and the school district did come through with that. Alderman Perk. Mayor, let me just clear one thing up uh, that the gentleman from uh, Five said the school district is not uh, reducing their millage for the next school uh, year. They're increasing their millage roughly about 3.61 mills. Yeah, now, Mayor, um, they're proposing to reduce it over at, at later years. Right. Mayor, I want to direct these uh, inquiries very carefully to our uh, chief administrative officer. Now, uh, Mr. Adams, follow me very closely here. Now, the board, by a six to one vote, and of course, I'm not, let me say preface this, I'm, I'm not advocating increasing the millage, but let's talk this through. The board, by a six to one vote, authorized for a $5 million bond issue for the link, which is gonna raise the law at least by two mills. Yes. Now, on the agenda is being proposed to um, for the the millage to remain at 21.98 mills. That was a 1.98 mills increase last year. Yes. Now, <clears throat> the presentation indicated that the um, the monthly payment is going to be um, what at least about uh, 400 <coughs> some thousand dollars a year. I mean, at, yes, at, in January of 2016. Yes, sir. <coughs> Now, in order to make that payment in January 2016, you're going to have to have the revenue to do it. Yes, sir. Now, if you're proposing to increase that mill from 21.98 mills to 23.98 mills in, in October of 2015, you're not, in my opinion, going to have the sufficient revenue to pay that monthly payment to take care of that. Why? It is the vice mayor's opinion that the reason that you're not going to have that 400 plus thousand dollars a month at that time is because our primary revenue comes from Avalor uh, taxation. So if you make that millage to go in effect on um, October the 2015, and that payment becomes due January 2016, three months later, then you're not going to have the revenue from, in my opinion, from that ad valorem taxes because you're depending on ad valorem for October, November, and December. Now, the ad valorem payments do not primarily come in, Mr. Finance Director, until uh, from uh, primarily in December, January and maybe it's February for the late payers. But most people are going to pay in December, January. So if you make that effective October 2015, the question then becomes are you, as finance director, going to ensure that the city of Starkville has that revenue available on January 2016? That's the question now. So if it were to go in effect now, I'm not advocating this. We're just talking this through, just friendly conversation here. If it goes into effect in October 2014, then you're going to have that revenue, other than the car tag money, that's going to come in for, uh, for this collection year. So by your delaying at your recommendation here the, uh, for this millage increase to take place in October 2015, then if we don't have that revenue there from the tax collection, then what happens for the city of Starkville? Where are we? Two things. It's going to impact the general fund, and it's going to impact the ending fund balance. So I just want to point these things out to you because there's nothing that's set in stone, in my opinion, that says that we have to make it effective for 
October 1, 2014. But the, um, the analysis here is you want to make it effective so that revenue comes. So let's just say that we don't have the revenue. We got a payment coming in for the, uh, for the municipal uh, building on, the, on Meg Street. We got a payment coming in for the cadence building, if that is the will of the board. We got payment coming in for the renovation project for the cadence bill, if that is the will of the board. So I'm just pointing out these things. So this is a board decision. I just want to point that out. And, and I know we have uh, so a lot of expertise in the audience. I stand to be corrected. We have a CAO out there, uh, a former uh, deputy director from the city clerk's office. If I'm wrong, I want you all to correct me this evening. I mean, or anybody else out there, if I'm wrong about what I said, I, I, I just want to point that out before we uh, we take this, you know, before this come up the pants. I'm not trying to kill this, you know, I mean, you know, but I'm just trying to point this out. So your millage number, you, of course, you don't have to vote on this. I mean, we don't have to vote. We're not going to vote on this tonight. But but you're asking your, the budget chair to advertise at this 21.98 mills. And I just want to point, I want you to be right, Mr. Adams, and this is a friendly conversation, you know, but I just want to make sure that your effective date is correct. You know, I'm not no expert. I'm not no business major. I'm just a, a country lawyer, okay? So uh, I just want to make sure we get all this right, okay? Yeah, Mayor, and, thank you. And, and, and Vice Mayor, thank, thank you for the question. I, I appreciate that. To that end, we're, we're noticing it at 21.98 because I understood that to be the, uh, the will of the mayor and of, uh, and, and of the budget chair, but, but, but I, I don't disagree with anything you just said. Look, look, look one last thing, Mayor, I want to say this. Look, Adams, I want you to be right. Yes, sir. I mean, this is not a Perkins matter. This is a city matter. So just make sure you're right. So when the, when we get tight, when we talk about going to the bank to borrow some money. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Manor. Uh, Mr. Taylor, uh, the link is interested in issuing this note in January. They are. Would, would they be amenable just to protect you and appease the, uh, the vice mayor's concerns, I guess, uh, would it be permissible to approach them to delay that from the 1st of January to uh, maybe middle to the end of January until that first tax payment comes in at the beginning of the year and then you know you've got enough revenue there to, to I mean, move forward? Alderman Lane, of course, I, I cannot speak for the link, but if it's the will of this board that I ask them, I will certainly carry that request. Uh, Mayor, uh, the gentleman from five asked me, of course, may I recognize? You may. The gentleman, um, you know, I think it's still going to be tight. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I want everything. We're trying to make it work. We're trying to work with the team here. I think if you delay it to gen, I don't think that's going to work. I, I think you're going to just have to have some with the money we're talking about, we're gonna to have to make it either maybe delay it to the to the next October at least, you know, give you a whole year on the collection, just like if you will make it effective this year, uh, then you got a year to collect because see, your primary revenue is gonna be your ever lower. But that'll be in January. Most of the majority will be in by the middle of January. You no, know, what I'm saying is, if if you make that millage uh, 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 increase effective October 1, 2015, what you're asking me is, see the. Uh, the project will, will in January, but still from November, December, and January, you're still not going to have all that money you're talking about. But Mayor, I'm going to yield now. Okay, thank you. All right, Alderman Mayor, Mr. Adams, you're comfortable we can make these payments with, based on our ending balance, our cash revenues. Well, um, a year's a long time from now, Alderman, but uh, but. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the uh, I, I will be comfortable with whatever the will of this board is, and, it, and if it's delaying it until after that tax collection, then then that's what we'll do. Mr. Mayor, Alderman Little. In all seriousness, Mr. CAO, we don't don't put that back on the board. So no, I, you're I, the finance director. We need to know sure. hard, fast. Facts. Yeah, this can be done. And, and, and Alderman, here's how here's how I can respond to that. As as it relates to, to right now, we do not have a liquidity issue. Uh, we are we, we have a strong operating position, and, and we are uh, and, and I would say that especially coming that our department heads have done an outstanding job managing their their departmental budgets through the year, and we, and we are finishing this year in a sound, strong position. How, however, uh, this is 
uh, this is your budget, and and it's and so this is what what I don't have is uh, I, I cannot forecast board decisions for the next twelve months and projects that will come up and things of like that. But what what I can say is if our if operation remains the same and there's you know nothing unforeseen that is, that is brought before and change and changes that position then I, I don't foresee a liquidity issue a year from now but but again I there there are things as it relates to decision making that are beyond my control that that make it difficult for me to to stake myself to a position a year from now but but yes all all things being equal I feel that that we will that we will continue to be in, in a sound operating position. Our mill continues to grow. Um, our revenues are up. Construction is up in the city. All of our economic indicators are positive. So I mean, I, I don't foresee a problem, but but also, but like I say, it's I don't have a crystal ball either. So that and so I didn't I didn't mean to be soft in my answer. I just I just didn't know. It it doesn't become an issue. Uh, if you're making the issuance after January because that's when your revenues start to accrue uh, for taxes in that year. It potentially is an issue if you make the issue prior to January. And as the discussion has been had, uh, getting uh, as far as possible out from January 1st uh, certainly helps you. Um, but provided that the bonds are issued in the new year, you shouldn't have any issue uh, with your first interest payment. Uh, that first payment you'll make will not be a $400,000 payment. It will be an interest only payment. Uh, and again, where, where he's struggling uh, to give you an absolute answer is not based on the fundamentals of this. It's based on a whole year of budgeting and, and, and spending in between, but, but the question is related to uh, whether millage is needed this year to begin servicing the debt on the bonds, and no, mill, millage is not needed this year to begin servicing the debt on the bonds, uh, provided that they are issued in the new year. Alderman Walker. Um, that certainly helped clarify some things. I think, uh, I think it was uh, Mr. Adams that mentioned that this is uh, the board's budget and we can do with it what we will. Um, that is true. Um, but we're going to be, we're advertising tonight to have uh, the public hearing and the adoption of that uh, at our next meeting in two weeks. Um, we need to have the budget. We need to have the budget well in hand before then so we can make informed decisions. So I'll know um, if the, the statements that have been made tonight, are in fact, are are accurate um, or that if I can that we don't need that increase this year I would like to be able to uh, study that a little bit and see um, just just where we are um, I think that's going to be important for all of us to, to be able to make that determination so um, as soon as we can uh, get the budget wrapped up to a point where we can have everybody look at it that would I would certainly be appreciative of that there should be a draft draft budget in your box yeah, if there's okay. a draft budget in everybody's box. Mr. Ramby, I'll be recognized. You may. I, I move to approve the adoption of setting the city of Starkville tax levy at 21.98 mills for fiscal year 1415 in accordance with the requirements of Mississippi Code annotated 3751-1 and 2133-45. Alderman Maynard has made a motion to approve the city of Starkville tax levy, uh, setting the city of Starkville tax levy at 21 point, or excuse me, Alderman Maynard's moved. Uh, has made a motion uh, to set public hearings for the adoption of a resolution setting the city of Starkville tax levy at 21.98 mills for the fiscal year 2014-2015 in accordance with the requirements of Mississippi Code annotated 37-57-1 and 21-33-45. Mr. Mayor, and add to that to advertise the public hearing for the millage and the budget to recess meeting September 16th is required by law and to advertise uh, for a public hearing for the millage rate and the budget uh, at the September 16 2014 meeting as required by law Alderman Manners that your motion yes sir go here second second motion has been seconded Baldwin little Alderman Manners do you wish to speak on the merits no sir. 
Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. Is it unanimous? It's unanimous. Mayor, can we take about a five minute recess? Without objection, we'll take a five minute recess. Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, we'll take a five minute recess. Proposal for renewal of the services for administration of the flexible benefit cafeteria plan. Mr. Adams? Me? Or Mr. Boyd? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you, you may. I think there's some other folks maybe in the audience that can help us with this and I'll maybe address my first question to Mr. Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams, we are currently paying what for management of our cafeteria plan? Dollar fifty per head per month. Dollar fifty per head per month. One dollar twenty five cents per head. Per month, thank you. Dollar twenty five per head per month. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. Miss Halbert, that comes out to, for a year forty five thousand fifty. Um, I'm, I'm interested in having some discussion about this because maybe there's some opportunities for us to be able to save some money here uh, and look at other vendors. I realize, Mr. Boyd, we've got open enrollment scheduled as well. Um, I would like to, to talk a little bit about what our options are, CAO and Director of Human Resources, and is there a way we can this late date look at other options for management of the cafeteria plan going forward well um, <clears throat> and Taylor may be better prepared to address that but my reading of the proposal that's before us tonight is that while it is for a three-year contract it does have a provision for cancellation for convenience is the terminology with 90 days notice uh, we, we do need to do something to be able to, and uh, Attorney Latimer might be able to address this also, we need to be able to make sure that we're able to provide the benefits on a pre-tax basis and have an effective means for doing that as of October 1. So our, our, our window here is very, very short, very narrow. Um, Mr. Boyd, may I, may I speak to that? That is a question I asked earlier today. Uh, it was either to the mayor or to Mr. Adams, I forget who I asked it to, but I said, is there is September 8th a magic date? In other words, could the open enrollment be postponed by the city till after the board meeting on the 16th to give the alderman at least two weeks to deliberate on this issue? Um, and Stephanie, you might want to come up and uh, help address this. Our issue is, is that we <coughs> tentatively have the other vendors uh, lined up and scheduled to be here Monday and Tuesday, uh, the 8th and 9th. Uh, we would have to contact them, cancel that, and try to reschedule them uh, sometime after the 16th meeting. It gives us a very narrow window to get to get that done and the, uh, the, the changes made to be effective for October 1, effective date. Uh, uh, October 1 is a, a magic date for that we have to do something, correct, Stephanie? Right. Um, and, and that's based on what? Why our is our current one? plan ending. Okay. And after September 31, the present plan ceases. So there's there's nothing in place for October 1 as of right now. Alderman and uh, Mr. Attorney, I'm doing a, I'm taking a page from, from Chris. I see him doing stealing the mayor's iPad occasionally to do legal research. So I'm doing the, the same thing on cafeteria plans here. And I, I, I see two things that I think are, I guess, uh, material here. Uh, beyond the uh, the scheduling issue, and certainly I'd like to recognize the, 
the work that our that our HR staff has done, as they all, and as Stephanie always does, and 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 doing an extremely professional job and uh, great job of scheduling our open enrollment, working with our vendors to be sure that that everything is attended to there. She's done she's done the same outstanding job again this year that she does every year. But uh, but uh, to your questions specifically there. Coming back to Alderman Maynard's question, the first is, given time, if we were to make a change, is is there a legal issue? And, and I'm looking at 317 here, Chris, and from what I understand, that another a number of other cities do. Right now, we are paying for this service, but there are a number of cities that do not pay for cafeteria plan administration. So, in the absence of consideration, I don't know that we have a bid law issue there. Um, as it relates to the ancillary benefits, now major medical is different. We're we're funding a hundred percent. Let me get over to the cafeteria plan. We're we're funding a hundred percent of the cost of our employees. Um, so the city is directly funding that from the general fund and from its various enterprise funds. So I think that as it relates to the major med and any other coverages that we are funding directly, there is a clear issue that would require public bidding. And uh, unless somebody knows something that, that I'm not seeing here, I think that you know, there would be a requirement for public bidding of the major medical and any of the benefits that the city is funding at 100 percent. As it relates to the ancillary coverages, those are elected co those are elective coverages that the employees choose to purchase or not purchase, and that, that we just simply payroll deduct for them. So again, I don't think that there is an issue for the city. I think it's just the will of the board. Tim, you deal with this a lot more than I do. Did I say anything that was incorrect there? Not with regard to the benefits. Not, I'm not fully familiar with the municipal statutes okay. with regard to the required benefits. What you is that consistent with what you've seen at least in other cities? Okay. So that, that Alderman, does that answer your question as it relates to, to options for the for the board and just sort of where we are right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'm looking at if, if we have an option to save $25,000 a year, I don't want to get locked into a three-year contract if we can do the same thing at no cost. Yeah, um, to, to the point that Mr. That Mr. Boyd made, there is an option to do under Section 125 short plans, basically have a shorter plan year, which would allow us to, if needed, proceed uh, to year end. Basically, the, the way that that would work uh, from, and this, <laughs> this is 10 minutes of research before this meeting, so, you know, this is, that's, it's worth about 10 minutes of research. Uh, under 125, it appears that in situations like this, you can do two short plan years, which would be, we would adopt a plan year so that, no, so that none of our employees lost their pre-tax coverage under, uh, under the, that's currently offered under the, the cafeteria plan uh, and then we could if need be have another plan that would start January 1 and, and run January 1 to the end of the fiscal year with whatever changes the board wanted to make um, minus the major medical piece I think we're tied to the major medical for a year since we self-insure um, and then you would start over again on on October 1 but that's that's the best I got on 10 minutes. If, if we had, if we were to adopt that, could personnel then go through the current cafeteria plan, um, sign ups that they already have scheduled this week? With the vendors they have, we go out 90 days and then starting January 1, take proposals, whether well, it's the current vendor or sure I, I would I, I think that would work if it was the board's will though to, to change administrators Chris is there anything that would stop us from just doing a 90 doing a contract I mean basically we're talking about if this thing becomes October 1st and we're changing comes effective October 1st and we're changing January 1st wouldn't we need to just do a 90 day contract um, let me say a couple things I, I've read the contract in advance of tonight's board meeting 
and so I can opine as to the legality of the contract and the proposed contract does meet the legal requirements and the current contract does have a 90 day cancellation provision for convenience. Uh, as far as can we enter into a smaller contract and then enter into another contract in January, <coughs> as I sit here right now, I don't think of a legal prohibition against that, but I'll be honest, I don't practice in this area of the law on a daily basis, and so I, I, I can't weigh in with absolute certainty on, on that or really any other issue sure. <laughs> that we're talking about as far as these vendors for these services. Yeah. Let me recognize. Alderman Manor. City Attorney, as you, as you read that contract, there's... Is there any financial penalty for canceling after 90 days? Uh, it does not say that in the termination of convenience section, which is section 8, and I don't see that in any other part of the contract. So I think it's just a pure termination for convenience provision with 90-day notice. So at that point, even if we did a six-month and six-month where we paid, we, we took this under advisement, had three months, between now and January to, to take a look at all the plans that are out there. If we decided to cancel, then we could cancel an effective April 1st, start a new plan and move forward. And that would give us that 90 day cancellation period. Would that be? Yeah, what, what I can say about this contract is if the board enters into this contract right now, it's another three year contract. And at any point in that contract, I think the board can terminate for convenience with 90 days notice. You have to terminate the day it became effective. Well, you didn't have to wait six months. Well, he did six months, sure. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor. Alderman Little. Is convenience defined in there? What would be convenience? Um, saving saving 75000 or saving 25000 a year? Or? Convenience is not defined in the contract. Convenience is generally a normally understood legal term of art in a contract that means at the will of the party. So it really has no teeth there. We can, we can do it it's at, at our it's discretion. At, yeah. You're obligated my for three months. My concern under most cafeteria plans, they have open enrollment periods, usually November 15th to December 15th. And we're really at the 11th hour, putting a lot of pressure on, on HR. And um, I just don't want to mess anybody's, anyone's benefits up. Yeah, you're right. going to this half heartedly, not know all the facts and the repercussions. Um, kind of in slippery, dangerous territory here with, with folks' benefits. And uh, there's a lot of paperwork, a lot of processing when they go through this process. And That's why I'm thinking six months. It's going to be a lot better. But I, I don't know that you can, I don't know this, but I think you've got to have your determination on um, cafeteria plan stuff done before the, the calendar year submitted and on the book. I don't know if you can book it after the first year. That's, just, that's a question someone else had to answer. I did a quick search today, and there are three licensed cafeteria plan administrators, third-party administrators, that just do cafeteria plans in the Golden Triangle. If the board wanted us to, we could reach out to those tomorrow and get some definition as to what our options were. I think that would be the prudent thing. Mr. Mayor, may I recognize? The, you may. Um, I'd like to make a motion. Table this item and let the CAO research those over the next two weeks. Um, I think you're still safe to go ahead with open enrollment because I envision that we wouldn't adopt anything different than this prior to that. Well, you know, I guess I get the feedback from the CAO there. Um. What are the practical difficulties that y'all see uh, with not having approval and uh, open en enrollment? Uh, well, it, and Stephanie can help me here. Uh, normally, the cafeteria plan administrator, in this case, uh, Southern, uh, Southern administrators, would be here for open enrollment next Monday. And they have uh, have the employees sign the the cards for payroll deduction on a pre-tax basis. So that gives uh, them a month to complete the enrollment. Yeah. Well, as I say, right now, 
the, the tentative schedule is that they are here next Monday with with an expectation of, of you know if we notify them that they are not uh, there's no signed contract I don't know whether they would be here next Monday to uh, uh, to go forward with uh, Hypothetically, assuming that they wouldn't, uh, and the board makes a decision uh, on the 16th, what does that do uh, to the calendar? If uh, you know, there's, there's, there's. I'm seeing two two ways that this can go. One is we go ahead and go forward with open enrollment Monday and Tuesday of next week as it's currently structured. Um, to do that, you know, we're, we're going to have to go forward on the assumption that we're going to be using Southern administrators. I'm not sure where Southern administrators would be in that process if they know that there's no approved contract. On the other hand, we can cancel the open enrollment that's scheduled for next week, uh, revisit this on the on the 16th, and have to have a plan in place to to move forward. That only gives us a two-week window to, to get everything done and completed, and open enrollment and all the employees in. You know, we've got to reschedule the the vendors, and, and I know this this is a very busy time for them, but. Uh, I asked Stephanie earlier, and she she feels that we could probably get those vendors rescheduled, uh, you know, sometime in the last two weeks of this month. Um, I, I would personally, I think we would be cleaner to to table open enrollment and not try to do open enrollment Monday and Tuesday yes. if we don't have a contract approved tonight. So I would I would say if we're not ready to go forward with this tonight, we cancel open enrollment, yeah. but realize 16th is a absolute must have something in place to, uh, to accomplish the October 1 effective date. And then, okay, so assuming it's approved on the 16th, uh, we'll know the identity of the administrator uh, on the 16th. Uh, does that give us enough time uh, to schedule it uh, and have the process complete by October 1st? Um, it will be pushing time, but at the will of the board, if you would like to table it and reschedule it for the 16th, we'll do our best. But you couldn't yeah. schedule it on the 16th. The 17th no, 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 no. or the 18th. It would, it would have to yeah. be would have to be the the first of the week following the, 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 yeah, the 22nd, 23rd. Uh, you won't know the identity yeah right until uh, mayor a big part of that depends on what the what the needs and working relationship with whoever the new cafeteria plan provider would be you know what what's their requirements as far as being able to get things set up you know and we're talking I, I would I would think that most of them are familiar with this and could step in and, and be able to respond on that short of a notice but you know I can't speak for them we, we haven't had those discussions so um, yeah, we would be strictly at their at their ability to work with us okay mr. mayor may I ask a question you may this is an ignorant question I'm just curious Randy will a vendor not come on the 18th on a Thursday and, and work Thursday and Friday to give us a rolling start into the next week? Yes, but part of it is going to be we, we've got to get some materials uh, printed up and, and, and ready, you know, and, and whether we can turn that around on, on Wednesday to have them in here on Thursday. Uh, you know, part of it's going to be getting forms through them and everything, so we would we would try for Thursday and Friday, but it might have to it might have to go into the first and following week. We, you know, we're dealing with, with unknowns at this point. Mr. Mayor, may I be reckoned? You may. I agree with the gentleman from three. I don't want to put undue stress on our city employees. Knowing, based on the attorney's advice, that we have 90 days, we can get out of this contract. If we don't, don't like it, 
and I don't want to make a rush decision on changing vendors just to make a rush decision on changing vendors I would make a motion that we uh, accept this proposal so the cafeteria plan is presented tonight and then move forward with looking at our options over the course of the next couple of months Alderman Maynard has made a motion to approve the proposal for the renewal of the services uh, for administration of the flexible benefit cafeteria plan as presented and to instruct the chief administrative officer uh, to review all options for future administration of the cafeteria plan. Alderman Maynard, is that your motion? It is, yes. Sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Little. Alderman Maynard, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, um, I just want to get something on the record. Mr. Cox, you're a representative of SABC? No. Okay. Are you any way related to, to this contract? Uh, uh, insurance programs that I represent coming up next are But you're not a representative of Southern Administrators and Benefit Consultants or an employee or in any way related to them? Okay. And is anybody in the room associated with SABC? No? Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda is the consideration of the proposal for renewal of services for the medical insurance benefit plan. Okay. <clears throat> and Mr. Cox is in the room, and uh, this is the proposal that he has <coughs> brought forward for renewal. Um, and again, I've, I've not been involved with this, uh, 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 the CAO and uh, Budget chair have, have been more closely involved than I have, but my understanding of, of this proposal is that it renews our current plan, which were grandfathered under the uh, uh, Affordable Health Care Act. Um, the renewal rate on our Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, self insured plan is <coughs> essentially no change, very, very slight decrease, but you may as well say no change as far as the rates on it. The uh, plan proposal for the Humana uh, dental plan uh, does have an increase of 7.7%, I think it is. Uh, no change on, on uh, life insurance or, or the voluntary uh, 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 plan options. Uh, the one thing that, that does change in this is that uh, currently, on our medical insurance program. Um, the city pays full cost for you know, employee coverage. Employees pay the full cost for any dependent options that they select. Currently there's only one uh, option and that is full uh, coverage for dependents. Um, this proposal, and Mr. Cox can speak to it better than, than I can, but it does have a provision for giving levels of, of coverage, uh, employee and one adult, uh, employee and children, or full family coverage. That gives the employees the option to be able to, to uh, choose their level of coverage based on their particular needs. Uh, and if you have uh, an employee who, who needs to cover children only, uh, then it gives them an opportunity to save money. So this does offer cost savings opportunities for our employees. It does not save the city any money because the full cost of dependent coverage is paid by the employee. But this does offer uh, cost savings opportunities for, for uh, employees who need dependent coverage. Mayor, if I be recognized. You may. Ms. Stephanie, um, under the proposal that Mr. Um, director just mentioned, Mr. Boyd, um, there's going to be a 7% increase uh, for the dental coverage. Now, as it relates to the, uh, the family coverage now, uh, there's just one category for family coverage. For, 
for the medical? For the medical, just one category, and also for the dental, just one. Right, but for the uh, for the renewal, for the open enrollment, there'll be more than one category for family. For the medical. For mm -hmm. medical. Yes, sir. For, for, there'll be more than one category. Right. Okay, uh, for the medical, for family, is, is there a proposed increase if you choose the family coverage versus what? Is there any, any increase on that? There is. If you choose the family coverage, the employee would be paying like $600.39 a month. Now? Now. Well, now they're paying basically the same, $600.39. $600 Will that amount stay the same with the open? That amount would stay the same for the family coverage. Okay. Now, if the employee chooses to add one adult, um, that would go for $348.74 for the employee. That's the amount the employee will pay per month. Okay, I just make sure I understand. So under the if if John Doe comes in for open enrollment mm -hmm. and gets the family coverage on the medical, that remains the same. Yes, sir. Now, if John Doe comes in with maybe like whatever you said, an adult, or how is it defined? It may be a little less. For the adult, it would be a, um, a little less than the family coverage. For the adult, it would be three hundred forty-eight thousand seventy-four cents. Right. Yeah. I'm just trying to be real clear. I'm not mm -hmm. in different information. So, but but the difference is the the um, the coverage that will be spoken to at the open enrollment at, um, at next week, September 8th and 9th, Monday and Tuesday. It'll just allow other options where some employees may have to get the family, may just be wanted up, depending on that particular need. Right. And but the only schedule increase uh, will be under the dental insurance, which would be a seven percent, and that's still with Humana. Yes, sir. And maybe the uh, I want to get ahead of the budget chair, but hopefully next year we can look at some other options, you know, to see, uh, you know, by other providers just to see what's the most cost effective thing. And hopefully we won't schedule any open enrollments next year until the board gives some direction. And this is nothing negative, it's just constructive. Y'all done a great job. I want to commend y'all for that. But hopefully we'll get, get um, uh, uh, some direction from the board before we schedule open enrollment so we'll be back in the same predicament we're in this year. Mayor, I think that's all I had to say. Further discussion? Any further discussion? Yeah, we you may. Make a motion that we adopt a proposal for renewal of services for medical insurance benefit plan and for the dental insurance benefit plan for the employees of the city of Starkville as presented. Motion has been made by Alderman Manor to adopt the proposal for the renewal of services for the medical insurance benefit plan and for the dental insurance benefit plan for the employees of the city of Starkville as presented. Alderman Manor, is that your motion? And to add to that, that going forward in 15, 16, we'll look at various options that are out there. Uh, all right. Uh, Motion has been made by Alderman Manor to adopt the proposal for renewal of services for the medical insurance benefit plan and for the dental insurance benefit plan for the employees of the city of Starkville as presented uh, and to evaluate uh, all available options in the future. Alderman Manor, is that your motion? Other available options. There might be a lot, y'all. <laughs> Say uh, and to evaluate other available options in the future. Correct. Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Manor, do you wish to speak on the mayor? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passed. Thank you. Thank you. Next matter on the agenda, is that all the way to yeah. E? Yeah. yeah. Next matter on the agenda is a request for approval of advertising for request for qualification for professional services to complete the Starkville Comprehensive Plan. Discussion. Uh, Alderman Walker. Um, glad to see this is uh, being placed on the agenda, and I believe, uh, although we haven't reviewed the budget, that there's room in the budget uh, for this coming year to begin. Uh, Going down this path, I think is something that uh, we are. It's time for Starville to re renew its comprehensive plan to make sure we're staying uh, ahead um, and also to comply with uh, 
state statute. Um, so I, I'm uh, so moved that we approve this motion. Motion has been made by Alderman Walker to approve of advertising for and a, a request for qualifications for uh, professional services to complete the start conference plan. Alderman Walker, is that your motion? Yes. Do you have a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Little. Alderman Walker, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. <laughs> Measure clearly passes. The next matter you have before you is a request for approval of the claims docket. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Little to approve the City of Starkville claims docket for all departments, including the Starkville Electric Department, as of August 29, 2014, for fiscal year ending September 30th, 2014, as presented. Alderman Little, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Little, do you wish to speak on the merits? Yes, no, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Aye. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> one more time. All those in favor, please signify no, by raising your take hand. Let's not take another vote. Let's just lock that one in right there. I'm going to get the gentleman from five there. <laughs> all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. By a vote of five in favor with two against, this measure passes. <laughs> The next matter you have before you is a request to issue a notice to proceed to Stidham Construction, the submitter of the lowest bid to replace approximately 5,700 linear feet of gravity sewer. Mr. Devil. Um, Y'all, this is a, uh, a sewer line over in the industrial park that um, basically failed, completely failed back in the, back in the uh, late spring, early summer. Um, it's an old ductile iron pipe um, that uh, where a, a, a discharge from a pumping station empties into it and there's a lot of hydrogen sulfide gases uh, present and it's just completely corroded the, the top of the pipe. Um, we went down attempting to make a couple of point repairs and as we tried to get close to the pipe the top would just collapse in on itself. Um, we had to back off and, and Right now, it's it's overflowed during rains on three different occasions in the last uh, three to four months. Um, now, when we redesign this line, um, this this line will is actually going to carry all the, the the sewer load from the 1998 annex areas in West Starkville, Northwest Starkville, North Central Starkville, and that area also includes the new uh, industrial park that's being for this area so when we replaced the line we were very careful to make sure that when we did it we uh, took into consideration the, the capacity of the line to serve us over a 50-year design life so um, this particular line is made of corrosion resistant materials um, and it will meet the need of those areas uh, which are essentially undeveloped at, at this point for the most part uh, those areas as, as they develop over the next 50 years and uh, will be reliable and dependable. May I move approval? Motion has been made by Alderman Perkins to approve of issuing a notice to proceed to Stidham Construction, the submitter of the lowest and best bid, to replace approximately 5,700 feet of uh, gravity sewer in the industrial park in the amount of $339,748.15 and authorize the mayor to execute associated documents. Alderman Perkins, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Maynard. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the mayor? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Devlin, yes. Stidham was the lowest bid? Yes. How many other bidders were there? One. Just Stidham? No, there oh, were two of. bids. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the other was Perma Corporation. And it should the tally, I think we had a bid tally on your, should be in your Yeah, I, don't, I didn't see it, and that's the reason okay. I asked the question. Just wanted to get that on the record. Yeah, okay. okay. It Thank was you. over a million dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's yeah, correct. the other bid was a little over a million dollars. And this this was in line with what the engineer's estimate would be. I was going to say. Mr. Mayor, can I be recognized for the you next may. item, please? <coughs> Mr. Mayor, oh, oh, I'm sorry, we had voted. No, we have Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Mayor. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Alderman Perkins. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, we've uh, had some discussion uh, 
at one of our recent meetings about the, uh, the water meters uh, for this AMI project. Uh, what I would like to uh, propose respectfully to the board, since this is nothing we're going to do right now, I'd like to see the um, chief administrative officer um, together with any assistance he may need from Mr. Devlin and any other uh, city staff to give us an analysis and study as to uh, what's the most cost effective um, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, bidding this out or um, using in-house labor. And with that being said, Mayor, I move that uh, the Chief Administrative Officer, uh, together with any assistance from Mr. Devlin and any other member of the staff, um, conduct a study and an analysis as to the, to the cost of using uh, this water meter services by bidding it out versus in-house labor and report their uh, study and findings back to the board so we can consider that and make a decision. Motion has been made uh, for the Chief Administrative Officer and uh, Mr. Devlin uh, to study options related to uh, using uh, city labor uh, to install AMI water meters and make a report to the board. Alden Perkins, that's your motion? Uh, Hold on, Jennifer. Still go ahead and approve this. No, we don't so want to no, we don't approve The motion not to approve. No, okay. That's my motion, Mayor. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Perkins, you wish to speak on the merits. Now, Mayor, uh, very briefly, you know, uh, I think we have time to get this study done. There's no urgency on getting this, uh, from my understanding of this project, to uh, have this bid it out. So I think it would be cost effective just for the city so we can make an informed decision. That's all I wanted to do. We can make an informed decision. Uh, there's been some questions raised in the past. I think it's good government just to find out, you know, just get information. And Mr. Adams, how soon do you think we can get that information back, um, roughly, given the things you got to do? Uh, I need to get with Mr. Devlin, and we'll have to – do you even have a cost estimate on what this – on what this work – what we were expecting this work to come in at? Now, this is for the meters themselves, not the installation services. You're, you're talking about the vice mayor just installing the meters, is that correct? Uh, right, right, installing. Yeah, okay. Okay, for installing. But yeah, now this, this is just to buy the meters. Right, right, so, so I just want to be clear. But, but, but still that motion, we can do that by, sure. and we're going to buy the meters because there was some discussion last time about bidding it out. Yeah. So, Mayor, there ain't no time crunch did, on this. I think you can get back, I think you get Did we approve it. a contract yeah. at the last meeting and have just just uh, bidding uh, advertised for proposals. Okay. And we hadn't done that yet. So right, we can, right. You know, so, we can, we can wait. So, but just information purpose, Adam, how soon? Yeah, I, think, I think just recess a Recess meeting in October, budget and yeah. all. I mean, sure, at the latest, we'd say October recess meeting. We just we need to ballpark the uh, the cost with the contractor, get some informal quotes. Okay. And then, we can, and then once we have that, we'll know the numbers we're working backwards from. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, th I think yeah. Doug's right. October so, recess meeting. So, we can approve this motion, then we still can go ahead and order the meters on the next motion. Yes, if that's what you want to do. Oh, yes, sir. Mayor, nothing further. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any Alden Little? Mr. Seale, could you speak to the funding mechanism for this? And because it was recently brought to my attention that we may not have adequate funding, and where we are on that situation, if you could brief the board, please, in full. Sure. And um, and and to speak to the to the status of our funding, I um, I, I don't know the the answer to that myself at this point. I think there's some. There's some research. There's some research that we need to do internally. Um, what, what I can tell you, Alderman, is that we uh, we made a commitment to you and to the public at the last meeting that we would we would find a way to do this within within our existing revenues, and that and that is our commitment. Uh, and so we will. Uh, um, uh, and and if I knew if if I knew more definitive definitively at this point, we're, we're working what with is the, the cost with our, of the meters. Doug, what, what do you project the cost of the meter? Oh, well, little you talk about the total cost of the installed system well, with everything. Well, one the, what separately would be fine. Oh, the meters the, themselves? The meters. How much are the meters? All right, these are just the water meters, and they're going to run between 1.4 and 1.5 million. But then there's other, you know, there's transmitters we have to buy, you know, composite leads. So what's the overall projected cost? Uh, installed costs, we're estimating between 3.2 and 3.4 million dollars. On the water side. On the water Mayor, side. I think a, I think a cost analysis like we looked at going would be a, a very very beneficial before we start ramrodding this through 
and we're not sure if we got adequate funding. Um, and who have we got looking into the financing? Anyone outside looking into this? We're, we're working with our with our uh, with our auditor to uh, to fully assess uh, the the situation as it relates to, to funding this and other projects right now with the, within this specific enterprise. Have we been told by anyone with the auditing firm that we don't we can't do this? Or we don't have the money to do this yet. Not not this project specifically. There there are uh, there are some issues that we are. Uh, that we're exploring with them, but but we don't have their we don't have their official findings yet. And 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 in fairness, Mr. Devlin has not met with with this group at all yet. This is just something that that it, that has recently emerged, and, and it's just. I think with, with with that information, it'd be premature for the board to move forward to purchasing anything without knowing more about it at this point. And at this juncture, I, I agree with uh, my colleague from Ward Six that we need to look into this a little further and and do the cost analysis study and. And see where you know projected benefits are before we jump out and spend that sort of one sort of money. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Was that a nay? Now, could you clarify it's what we're, we're not? What, can we read the motion one more time, please? Clarify what we're. Um, a motion for the CAO, CFO, and uh, Doug Devlin and any other city staff uh, needed as to the, to research the cost of bidding out services versus using in-house labor and installing AMI water meters. And then I, I wrote down the CAO feels that this can be presented in October. We can't hear you down here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and, and, and she tagged that with in the. the that we'll be back to the board at the uh, October recess meeting so with our. We're just doing the study right now. That's correct. It's hard to hear down here. Okay. But did that motion encompass the cost assessment in addition to the no. assessment about? Not, not for the water meter specifically. Just the installation no. of the meters. So this, is, your, is your intent to do a holistic cost assessment? I think I think we ought, we should. I think. I think and so, you know. so you, so to add to that, we're talking about a motion. Excuse me, Mayor. I'm picking up a turn. I'm sorry. Do you, do you want to make a separate board order? Or I will tag on to. I, 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 I can instruct him uh, to provide that as well. Okay. Uh, but if you want to make it in the form of a board order, uh, you, you can do that as well. I, I will instruct him to save time if y'all are That's coming. Fine. That's that. fine. I'm fine with that. All right. Uh, is there any further discussion on the water meter issue? Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, thank you, Mr. Man. Devlin. Uh, you. you have no mat further matters in an open session. You do have two matters uh, for executive session, uh, which are ratification of uncontested disciplinary matters. Uh, I am willing to take a motion on those in open session, and we can avoid the executive session altogether. Otherwise, we need a motion to go and close. Mr. Mayor, may I be recognized? You may. Mr. Mayor, you want a motion on both of those? Okay, Mr. Mayor, I move that the uh, recommendation of the um, the fire chief in both instances be uh, be accepted and ratified. The motion has been made uh, by Alderman Perkins to accept and ratify the recommendation of the fire chief uh, in two disciplinary matters uh, as presented. Alderman Perkins, that's your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Okay. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Perkins, you speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. A motion to recess. Alderman May. Did we address item two under K? And if not, I make a motion that we table item two until item two under what? Public, Public services. services. No, we did I, I we, we did address it in that it was discussed and no motion was made. Okay, that's fine. Uh, a motion to recess is in order. Mr. Mayor, I move that this board stand in recess until the uh, 16th day of September 2014 at 5.30 p.m. in this courtroom. Motion has been made by Alderman Perkins to recess until August 19, 2014 at 5.30. No, 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 no. September, September 16th. 16th. That's wrong. Motion has been made by Alderman Perkins to recess 
until September 16th, 2014 at 530 in the courtroom at City Hall located at 101 East Lampkin Street. Alderman Perkins, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Yes, motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the merits? Uh, no, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Stand in recess. Y'all have a good